Well, I mean, I should first say it's not me that says it. It's, it's every professional institution. So, I mean, the numbers are, are frightening. The, it's, it's over a million STEM-related workers are needed. I think in engineering alone by 2020. So that, that's the, the skills gap. The first thing to do is close the gap, I think, between higher education and, and schools. One of the ways, one of the key ways you inspire ch children, students to learn, is giving them access to ideas. But also, very importantly, that there's meeting academics, and, and that's why the summer school comes in. It's about um, aspiration and about uh, just, sh the, the paths are there, right? It, it is absolutely possible for a, for a child who's never had contact with the university from Tower Hamlets or anywhere else in the country to go through. That's about linking up um, universities, business and schools. That's, that's what that's about. And it's about giving information to the, to the students. You need to make sure that universities, first of all, know that that's part of their job. We try and we, we, do, a, you know, we do a lot there. And so universities want to do it. I think we could do better. And I think that that can come from a partnership with government. It has to, because the money's got to come from somewhere. As well as extracurricular things that you've been talking about, you know, meeting people outside of the classroom, what goes on in, in the classroom is obviously extremely important, mm. and um, coding has not really been in the classroom at all thus far. Now, new computing curriculum comes in in September. Mm. Where do you see that going? Do you, do you think it will be a success? Do you think um, it was doomed to, f to fail from the start because there was never enough funding involved or never enough hours of training? Where do you see that? I, I don't know about the particular challenges in schools. Um, it's obviously a good idea to have a big focus on coding in school. One thing I do know and one thing I've often sort of floated at my university and would like to do, I think, is I'd like to see how universities can be involved in training teachers as well. When I talk to physics teachers, which I do know about, I talk to them, um, one of the things I think they'd like to have access to is, is current research so they can bring it into the classroom. Um, as well as homegrown skills, there is a fear that people will be put off from coming to the UK to study, and even if they do, yeah. it's actually it's now very difficult to stay in the UK, even if you did incredibly well at a great university. Do, do you see a problem there? Yeah, I mean, that, this is well known. I mean, the universities have been very vocal about this, the, and, and uh, government are well aware of it as well, actually. Th there are different kinds of <laughs> immigration, which is what you're saying. There's the, there's the, there's the, there's the students, there are, there are researchers, the, there's high-skilled immigration, which is there because there's a vast high-tech a high edu need for highly educated people in this country. That's brilliant. That's what our economy is increasingly based on. And so it's, yeah, I, I, I share your, the sense of your question that that surely is something that should be addressed. At Tech City News, we report on startups. Would you ever consider yourself starting a startup? <laughs> If something came up like that, then I, yes, it would be a great thing to do. I mean, of course, I spend half my time now making television programs, so my most likely start-up would probably be something <laughs> making television programs now, because that's where my expertise has drifted in the last few years.